Bozeman, are you ready to pick up a new hobby? All right, let's start this thing. Nice Lake is a picturesque body of water nestled 9,500 feet up in the Tobacco Root Mountains. The views are incredible, and the fishing's not bad, but those are not the reasons my family hiked up several thousand vertical feet to visit the lake. We were looking for this. Yes, we made that climb because of a hunk of PVC pipe stashed in some rocks. That is a geocache. We are geocachers. Our hobby employs a multi-billion dollar constellation of government satellites to find Tupperware hidden in the woods. <laughs> Geocaching is a form of high-tech hide-and-seek. It's the key to a secret world hidden all around you. There are more than 250 geocaches within a 10-mile radius of where you're sitting right now. And that's a small fraction of the more than 2.5 million caches that are hidden worldwide in cities, forests, and sometimes in plain sight. The location of these hidden objects is published online. Finding them requires the magic of the global positioning system. GPS satellites transmit time information to Earth. A GPS receiver can calculate your position anywhere on the globe based on slight differences in time. GPS is a highly precise system that employs atomic clocks and relies on Einstein's theory of special relativity. This is high-level physics, very sophisticated stuff. But geocaching itself is very simple. So what is a geocache? What makes this such an interesting hobby? The answer lies in the variety of the hides and their locations. Practically anything can be a cache. And you never know what you're going to find inside. Tradable toys, tools, collectible gigas, or even a Huey Lewis and the News cassette tape that inexplicably thrilled my senior son. <laughs> now, while GPS can be accurate to around 15 feet, small containers such as this one make hides very challenging in urban environments. And even large containers can be difficult to locate given the nooks and crannies in the wilderness. As geocachers have improved in skill, those hiding the caches have amped up their cleverness to the point where geocaches can be hidden in plain sight. Camouflage challenges our visual acuity, while the truly clever and creative hides challenge our assumptions of the world. Is it concrete or is it a cache? And some caches literally require a puzzle to be solved. Aside from the challenge of a good hide, geocaches often contain travel bugs. These are special trackable items with a designated mission, such as visiting certain spots like Civil War battlefields, going to bodies of water, or in the example of Bailey's travel bug, visiting dogs and the places that dogs hang out. Lest you think this is a humorless nerd activity, I give you one of our most famous travel bugs, Cindy the Cinderblock. Cindy has traveled more than 12,000 miles to more than 200 caches, and here she is hanging out on a nice island with some wild horses. Geocachers have a sense of adventure. Someone used a helicopter to place a cache on top of this abandoned bridge column in the middle of the Potomac River. The people pictured here assembled a team, kayaked to the base, fired a bow and arrow trailing a climbing line, and scaled the column to recover this. Impressive, but they weren't even the smartest people. The first people to find this never left the ground. They assembled a system of lines, pulleys, and cables, swung a magnet over the cache, which was metallic, plucked it off the column, signed the log, and returned it. Now, most caches are far more mundane, but the destinations can be fascinating. My favorite caches are in the forest. They range from easy hikes to places like Grotto Falls to day-long climbs up 10,000-foot mountains. Some of the best go to uncommon destinations that afford great natural beauty and solitude. Geocaching is perfect for road trips. Many caches are located near historical sites, including monuments and ghost towns. The online cache descriptions often contain little-known and interesting facts and about the history of the area and its people. What you can find may surprise you, such as old Kilroy here. He's on the World War II Memorial on the National Mall in Washington, DC, if you know where to look. And thanks to geocaching, I do. 
Are you looking for the northernmost monument to the Confederacy? There's a cache near that in Helena. Now, other sites are a little less historic, <laughs> but no less interesting. Geocaching is a great way to discover funky local features like our very own Gallatin Valley icon here, Clyde. You can find things that you would never otherwise see, like a tombstone just off the trail between Lindley Park and the library. It's not in the cemetery, but take up geocaching and you might find it. Geocaching can be addictive and competitive. Bragging rights come from being FTF, the first to find a newly hidden cache. Here you can see my daughter Mariah celebrating an unexpected FTF at a firefighter's monument in Idaho. We have literally dropped what we were doing to go out and chase a newly published cache. But mostly geocaching is a great excuse to spend time with family, explore our Montana backyard, or make discoveries in the cities and states we visit. Are you ready to join more than six million geocachers worldwide? Yeah. All right, you have, a, you have a serious task. You need to pick your geocaching name. Well, maybe it's not so serious. Mine is Leningrad Cowboy. Like the Finnish band, I have an unhealthy obsession with tractors and all things Soviet. My wife's geocaching name is Sinto. My daughter is Iguk. Our son is Geonute. And you met our dog, Bess, the big brown geohound. You can sign up for free at geocaching.com. If you have a smartphone, you already have all the equipment you need. If not, a dedicated GPS receiver can be purchased for less than $100. Whether you are a peak conqueror, an urban adventurer, or simply curious, a hidden world awaits your discovery.